Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and today we have a new Wi-Fi router from Dili, the DIR-X3000C. And honestly, I love this Wi-Fi router. But before anything else, I would like to say thanks to our friends from Dili, Philippines for making this review possible. What we will be doing today is unbox, set up, check web management or the things that we can actually do with this Wi-Fi router range test and maybe compare with the stock modem router range gaming check its network performance not the internet speed but the actual bandwidth that we can use with this wi-fi router lastly conclusion and without further ado let us unbox the unit It comes with some documentation, a power brick, a LAN cable, and the actual unit itself. For the specification, this is already Wi-Fi 6AX3000, so for its Wi-Fi mesh, it speeds up to 3000 Mbps. 574 Mbps for 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi frequency while 2,402 Mbps for 5 GHz Wi-Fi frequency. It has 5 high gain antennas, 3 Gigabit Ethernet LAN ports, 1 Gigabit WAN port, latest WPA3 wireless encryption, and a lot more. I'll try to include on the description below where you can actually check the full specification of this Wi-Fi router. And now let me show you on how to configure this Wi-Fi router. First is plug the power cord. Then the LAN cable coming from your source of internet, in our case, this is directly connected to our modem router, and connect it at the one port at the back of this Wi-Fi router. Connect to the default SSID, and then the password at the back of your Wi-Fi router, and you already have your internet connection available. Okay guys, that is actually easy here in the Philippines, but it might vary from other regions because here, we just connect it to the main modem router, and this Wi-Fi router will obtain a DHCP IP from the modem router and that is already working. For other configuration option, we will show it to you on the next part on the web management console. But if you don't like to see the web management console and just want to go directly to the test, go to this timeline. Now, let us check the web management console. Okay guys, right now we are on the login page of our web management console which is 192.168.0.1. Let's try to enter the credentials that we have set and there you go. You will be redirected to the home page where you'll be able to see here the internet, router, and client information. First, let us try to click on the internet. Under the internet configuration, you have here the internet access which means that where you are actually getting your internet connection for us it is connected to a dhcp configuration because we are getting a dhcp ip directly from our modem router which give us an ip address but in your case it might differ you can have here a ppoe configuration static ip or bridge mode and aside from that one we have your ipv6 and next would be the vlan for the vlan you can configure this one if you have vlan tagging or other configuration that you have and also the internet service provider for different region, I believe this Singtel is for Singapore. I'm not sure with the other uh, telco, but I'm not enabling this one for now. So let's disable this and go to the home page. Under the home page, we're going now to the router. Click on this one. And for the router, you have here the basic LAN settings. We have the intranet access, which is 192.168.0.1. That will be the web management console that we have right now, and that is the one we are accessing. Of course, you will need to set the subnet mask as well, but by default, guys, this is already configured when you use this Wi-Fi router. And the auto-assign IP address will be the one responsible for the DHCP service, meaning that devices that will be connecting to your Wi-Fi network will have this IP address. So the start IP address would be 192.168.0.2 because of that one will be used for the web management console and so on and so forth. And aside from that one, going back to home, we have here the client. Okay, for the client, there are a lot of things that we can do to connect the devices on our Wi-Fi network. Like for example, we have here a 
a device, a Huawei Pro, you can actually create a speed limiter for these devices. Like, for example, if you click this one, you can uh, set the uplink internet speed and downlink internet speed. And aside from that one, you have here block this as well if you want to block these devices. And now going back to home, under the clients, this will be the same one with the client that we have clicked earlier and the router information here, the Wi-Fi setup. Okay, under the Wi-Fi setup, this is where you can actually change the configuration of your wireless settings. Like for example, you have your 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi state. This is currently enabled. If you turn up this one, meaning there will be no 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network on your Wi-Fi router. But aside from that one, you can also hide the SSID for broadcasting. So not everyone can actually see, oh, there's a Wi-Fi router or a Wi-Fi SSID that is available. We can try to connect on this one. It can be hidden as well. And of course, aside from that one, you can change the SSID in here, network mode, encryption method, which is good. This is already WPA3. And you can set the Wi-Fi password as well in here, channel width, and of course, wireless channel. And you have your smart connected, meaning that the SSID for the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi frequency will have the same SSID. So if you connect to this Wi-Fi router, it will be the one responsible to allocate you if it will be suitable for the 2.4 or 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. And of course, we also have your Wi-Fi 5 backup network, meaning this is actually helpful for a lot of Wi-Fi routers because sometimes there are instances that some mobile devices are not able to see the Wi-Fi network from a Wi-Fi 6 router. So this is a good addition on this Wi-Fi DIR X3000C. And then of course, going to the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi settings, this will be the same. You can choose the SSID, hidden network, encryption, network mode, Wi-Fi password, channel width, and wireless channel. Now going back to home again, we have here the internet setup. Under the internet setup uh, that we have clicked earlier, this will be the same. And now let's try to go to network. On the network, we have here the last settings. This is the one that we explained earlier as well from the main page. And we have the transmit power. For the transmit power, we have three configuration, low, middle, and high. Of course, we usually set it to high. And next will be for the guest network. Guys, this is great. You can create a guest network for your guests, for your visitors. So you can create a for 2.4 or 5 gigahertz if you want. Change the SSID. Wi-Fi network for your guests, of course, the network password as well. Next would be guest exclusive mode, meaning that the guest devices that are currently connected on this Wi-Fi network won't be able to access the one that is connected on your home network. And aside from that one, that will be the same for the 5 years Wi-Fi frequency, the same configuration. And going over to the network configuration, you have your mesh networking. Okay, for the mesh networking, we will create a separate page over this one because we have another DIR x 3000 c to configure and we'll try to test that one as well on another video. And next we'll be going to parental control. Guys, for the parental control, this is actually good for this Wi-Fi router. I really like this configuration. Like for example, for the Mac filter, you can add a device using the Mac address if you want to uh, allow this device to connect to your Wi-Fi network. Just enter here the MAC address. Choose always schedule if you just want to connect, make them connect to your Wi-Fi network on this schedule and disable, meaning that they will be able to access the Wi-Fi network. But for always, meaning they won't be able to access your Wi-Fi network. Okay, and aside from that one, we have here the IP filter as well. And next will be the URL filter. Guys, as you can see here, we have already added a URL address for this one to make, show you on how it works. So currently we have here www.speedtest.net and schedule type is always meaning that this will be filtered. You won't be able to access this URL address. So let's try to access speedtest.net. Okay. And as you can see, it is not loading. Okay. Then let's try to close this one. Then let's try to modify the URL address. and choose disable so meaning this url filter will be disabled so meaning we can access the speedtest.net so open a new tab again then speedtest.net and there you go we are able to access the speedtest.net website and next one will be going back to network okay we have here uh ddns port mapping firewall guys for the firewall this is just very very basic you can just uh, enable 
uh, the firewall or turn it up high or low these have description on this if you want to configure this one and aside from that one you have here denial of service if you want to enable this one as well and going back to network we have here the ig and protocol and next would be the advanced settings for the advanced settings this just give you information or configuration for the number of users per ssid 64 is actually a lot so i'm not sure if you can utilize this one but i don't have those much devices to fully utilize or test if it can handle 64 devices connected simultaneously and we have your beacon interval wireless frame short interval wps button function if you want and going back to the network that's all and we'll be going to the system under the system we have here the router information that we have shown you earlier admin password you can change the credentials that we have set earlier firmware upgrade if there is a new firmware available for this wi-fi router and we have here lag as well okay and we have your schedule restart guys this is actually a good addition to this wi-fi router every now and then you should actually try to restart for maintenance for your wi-fi router and we have here the time setting and of course system restore if you want to go back to the default setting and of course system reboot okay and i think that will be all for the web management console now let us do a range test on how far we can go and still have internet access Okay guys, right now we are standing in front of the Dealing AX3000 mesh Wi-Fi router and we're going to do a speed test and let's try to check our connection. We are currently connected to the DIR AX3000 by gigahertz Wi-Fi frequency and let's do a speed test for our baseline testing. Okay, and currently we are able to get 490 Mbps per download while 499 Mbps per upload. Now for our next test, we'll be on the bedroom. Okay, and right now we are on the bedroom and we're going to perform a speed test again just to make sure we are still connected to the 5 GHz Wi-Fi frequency. And let's hit test. And currently we are able to hit 492 Mbps per download while 345 Mbps per upload. Now, let's go downstairs. Okay, and right now guys, we are on the ground floor and of course, our Wi-Fi signal is weak and we are only able to have a low wi-fi connection but we're going to test as well on what speed we'll be able to get on the 5 gigahertz wi-fi frequency let's do a speed test okay even though we are on the ground floor with a concrete second floor we are able to get 20.6 mbps per download and 37.3 mbps per upload on the 5 gigahertz wi-fi frequency but let's try to check on the 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi frequency on what speed can we get okay for the password okay and we are now connected to that 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi frequency and let's try to go back to our speed test before on 5 gigahertz wi-fi frequency we're able to get this one and now hit go okay and we are able to get more download speed at around 102 mbps per download while 20.8 per upload now let's go on the roof deck okay guys right now we are on the roof deck and let's try to check we are still connected to that 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi frequency of the d-link and let's do a speed test okay and currently we are able to get 31.8 mbps per download while 13.8 per upload that is connected to the 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi frequency of that d-link wi-fi router and of course we'll try to show you if we can still connect to the modem router that is on the same location of our d-link ax3000 so of course we're going to connect to the 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi frequency as well and that will be the huawei 2.4 okay as you can see here it's huawei 2.4 Let's connect on this one and the password that we have set is okay and we are connected to that huawei wi-fi router and let's try to do a speed test as well for a comparison currently or previously we are having 31.5 mbps for download and 13.8 for upload on the d-link while on the huawei let's try okay guys as you can see that Huawei modem router provided by my internet service provider is unreliable. We were not able to finish a download speed test and upload speed test. And as you can see, we are disconnected on that Wi-Fi router. 
and automatically we are able to connect to the DIR AX3000 of the D-Link Wi-Fi router. Guys, that range was amazing. We were able to have internet access on all location and definitely better than the stock modem router where we are not able to complete a speed test on the roof deck. And honestly, the roof deck is the hardest part for our Wi-Fi routers to reach. Of course, reach is always nothing if it is not actually stable. So we tried our favorite game, Mobile Legends, and yes, we were able to have a single digit latency on the bedroom, while on the ground floor, single digit as well, and some instances of double digit, but still competitive and no lag. Next one is the most important part of the review is when I try to check the website for this DIR X3000C. It mentioned it delivers two gigabit speeds up to three gigabit per second. And that would not be included there if it is not actually true. So we tried to actually test it with my desktop connected with a Wi-Fi 6 card and I was able to get a 2.4 gigabit network connection. And of course, we tried to transfer a file to my NAS server. And guys, I was getting more than 100 megabytes transfer speed per second. And that actually equates to a gigabit network connection. Okay, I apologize for that because my NAS server currently have a gigabit LAN card and my router and switches only have gigabit port where my NAS server is connected. So that is the best I can get for now and that is the bottleneck. But hopefully in the future we can get or obtain a 2.5 gig switch and Wi-Fi router and test it. If this test does not make sense for you, try to copy a file on your Wi-Fi network and see the max transfer speed. Because honestly, I tried another router and even though I am getting a 1.2 gigabit network connection, my max transfer speed is only around 30 megabytes per second. Okay, now for the conclusion. This Wi-Fi router works great. You have seen the test, even try to compare it to the stock modem router Huawei, and it is actually easy to understand and configure, mesh capable, Wi-Fi 6, parental control, PPoE, and a lot more. Definitely, this one should be on your list if you're looking for a better network experience. And another thing why I would really suggest this DIR X3000C is the actual transfer speed. I was really amazed with that one. I was getting the same transfer speed using a LAN cable to my NAS server. I believe this is actually Wi-Fi 6 certified. I tried to check the Wi-Fi Alliance website for certified dealing products. I found out that there is a DIR X3060C that is certified. And per checking it on Google, that actually directs to that. DIR X3000C. Not all Wi-Fi routers are certified by the Wi-Fi Alliance. Try to check that Wi-Fi Alliance and check on Wi-Fi certification for Wi-Fi routers or Wi-Fi devices. That is actually great. And okay, the thing that I think there is a need for improvement for this one is there should be at least one 2.5 gig port for this one. I know that it's not a big deal for everyone, but I think it's a good to have because we are getting a wireless connection speed up to 2.4 gigabit per second. And I would like to fully utilize that one by having my NAS server connected to a 2.5 gig LAN. And other than that, I think this is a well-rounded Wi-Fi router. And I think that will be all for now. If you have comments, suggestions, comment down below or message me at JK Chavez on FB. Again, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Stay safe and bye.